All right, what's up everybody? Back here again. Uh, we're going to take another look at another DNA 200 build that I'm working on here. All right, so if you followed along, if you've seen in some of my older videos, you've seen that I did this wood box uh, for the DNA 200. Uh, you know, great build, awesome, you know, it was nice and simple. Uh, for me, the box, a little bit big, you know, it was okay. But I had stumbled across this on eBay, okay? Now, this is a custom aluminum box, right? Custom made, uh, pre-cut out for the DNA 200 screen, uh, two holes for the up and down buttons. And now, the guy who makes these has two options. You can either get... Um, I think type A calls it. So you'll basically get, um, you know, he'll you get all these little buttons, and it actually comes with the buttons too. And it'll be your fire and your up and down. I chose option B, which utilizes a uh, MyTech 12 millimeter MyTech switch, or any 12 millimeter switch, whatever you want to use. I got a MyTech. You know, these things are incredible. And then it's going to use the two, uh, just two little aluminum buttons that are going to sit in there and touch the buttons on the board so uh, really cool I'm so glad I fell across this they have a bunch of different colors um, so when you get it it'll have you know the holes in the front like this it, you know depending on which type you get it had the hole I ordered the switch so so far I just did a little prep so we should look at the inside it comes already um, you know pre pre drilled pre cut for the magnets so I put in um, four quarter inch round by eighth inch thick magnets here and I, I think it requires something bigger over here but uh, I use what I had these are um, eighth inch round by eighth inch tall magnets just you know put some extra glue in there and got them to set in so you know so far all I did was put the magnets in all right we're good he even got a you know a nice little pull tab at the bottom to pull it off uh, you know I'm super impressed so this is like I said modeled after the 1590 G Hammond size roughly it's just a touch bigger all right, so magnets done. All right, I just screwed in the switch with the bolt or with the nut. Screwed the nut down, that's in. You know, and prepped the leads. And then I had to drill the hole in the top for your 510 connector. You know, you could put that wherever you want to put it. Um, I offset it a little bit to the, you know, a little bit opposite of the um, switch here. If you see, here's my 510 hole. You know, in the middle, would have put it over here a little bit. So that's fine. I just offset it a little bit. Okay. And uh, the quality is just, I mean, this hole here is finished real nice. It's beveled. I'm pretty impressed so far. But, uh, yeah, this was um, the store on eBay is Alpine Tech. I'll, uh, I'll try to get a link in the description when we get to it. All right. So, I guess we can try to get started. First thing I'm going to do here, oh, yeah, for the board, too, since I already had it kind of already in use. Um, if you want to see how I prep this board all up, go watch my first video, uh, you know, DNA 200 board prep. But I left the battery lead on. We got the tap connector still connected in the same place. Um, you know, I desoldered the output, the atomizer connectors. I'm going to redo that once we get it on place. And all I have added so far is the leads for the fire fire switch. All right, and it's just these these um, solder pins right here. Okay, you just got to find the one that's labeled F and put your two wires on. So that's what we're going to do with that. So first thing I want to do, okay is I want to get this screen, uh, you know, up to the hole. All right, so we got the hole. And now this, the other one was nice because it had the, you know, frame and all the pieces that you kind of need for um, all the little pieces you need to get it kind of like in place like right away. So what we're going to have to do is I'm going to use kind of like how I did my DNA uh, 40s. Is I'm going to use this uh, 3M double-sided sticky tape this stuff is incredibly incredibly um, sharp and uh, sticky so we're gonna get the screen in place get that screwed down and then or get it taped down all right cut a piece of that and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use some epoxy which we'll have to work that out too but so so what I do is I just stick the double sided tape right to the back of the screen like this and I'm going to use my finger 
I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to show all this, but you know, I got to get this in the right spot. So once I get the screen where I want it, I just push down the tape on the ends, on the outs, on the sides. Okay, I got this just a little long over here. Try to trim this down. Yeah, the magnets stick to everything. Okay, and this is just basically, you know, just to kind of get it in place. All right, so that's what we're looking at. All right. Now we got the screen in place. Okay. Let's see, I'm gonna move that back. All right. So, screen's in place. So now, you know, normally with the DNA 40s and stuff, you know, you I wouldn't have to worry about lining up all this stuff on the bottom and getting good spacing for the switches. So what I'm going to do now, all right, you see I stick the USB through the hole, and our switches are right in, right in place. Okay, so now what I need to do is get the switches, get these two little buttons, and like I said, it, it comes with them. If the weather type you get, you'll get two or three of them. All right, and if you get the type like mine, you need to order yourself a 12 millimeter switch. Okay, so we got these little buttons. I'm just going to set them in the holes. So now we're looking something like this, right? So now the switches are kind of just sitting in here. See how it pushes up? So now what I need to do is I'm going to use... Okay, we're going to leave that for a second. I'm going to use what's called um, steel stick. This two-part putty. comes in a tube like this. And um, cut a strip of this off. Now what this will do, this will be able... This will give me the ability to kind of put some space between the board and the button so that you know it's not all smushed tight you know I don't if you don't have screws or, or anything like that I'm not sure what you would use to um, you know pack it out and hold it in so once I get this in place and I get um, and it dries and it's kinda of firm I'll go back and I'll, and I'll stuff it a little deeper a little tighter this way we can uh, I know it ain't gonna move anywhere alright so I'll cut a piece of this and I like to put a rubber glove on when I mush this stuff up because it'll get on your hands and then you'll get it all over the mod. So all you do with this stuff is you literally just knead it in your fingers. Sometimes it works if you heat it up, if it's a little cold, knead a little better. Alright, so you just want you want to get it to if you're using this kind of putty stuff, you just want to get it to uh, you know a, a steady consistency. It'll get like a black color. All right. So I'm just going to take a little piece of this and I'm going to roll it up, and we're going to see how I'm going to do this here.
So I'm gonna take, let's see, what do we got here? All right, I'm gonna take a flat head. I'll show you once I get this kind of, just make sure we're getting good adhesion with the putty. Kind of want to just like smush it in so you know you're getting it to touch. You know you're gonna get it to stick. Now you want to, you kind of want to get this kind of, kind of tight in here because you're going to be pushing on this a lot, so you don't want it to be breaking off all the time. But I figure once I get it set in place, then I can kind of stuff it in, stuff the sides in a little bit better, and get something on the back of it. Plus the battery, the battery's going to go in and it's going to sit up tight against it. But you know. All right. So now what I'm doing, okay, so, you know, I, do, I don't want this USB connector to be sticking out like a mile, so I'm trying to keep that flush, and that'll kind of keep keep us in, in kind of the right spot. So I just got a little piece down in here and a little piece up here right now, and I got it kind of in place where I want it, okay, and once that dries up a little bit, I'll be able to, so yeah, once I'm two little pieces dry and it's a little more sturdy, I'm going to pack a little more of that stuff in here and I'm going to put some down on the bottom, um, you know, to hold it to, you know, put a little more on top, a little more on the bottom, just to hold it in place. So when you're pushing on these buttons, um, you know, it ain't going to pop it out. And that's why I opted to go with this version of the box, not using the, um, the actual onboard button for this DNA 200, because I figured... I don't really have any good mounting. It's not going to be screwed in or clipped in or in tight in a case. So I figured, you know, pushing on this one a lot more over time, it's going to be better. This is actually screwed into the aluminum. So, all right, that's part one. <clears throat> I'm going to take a pause here. I'm going to let that dry up. I'm going to putty this up a little more, and then we'll come back for part two. I'll install the 510 connector. Um, we'll get the wires connected, and we'll pop the battery in. It's, it's pretty simple. There ain't a whole lot of going on. All right. Check out part two. Thanks.